Hello friend, this is a tutorial that will show you how to make a logo in the style of Gravity Falls. You'll need a few things before we start. For starters, there's Photoshop. I'm going to be using Creative Cloud 2015, but I believe the features I'll be using go as far back as CS6. There are a few fonts you'll need. The main one you'll definitely need is Gravitation Falls by Maxigamer. If you want to replicate the rest of the stuff around the logo, then you'll need the following fonts. Waltograph, Old Press, and MV Bowley. MV Bowley is included with Windows, so I don't have a link for that one, but you might need to find a download if you're using another OS, I'm not sure. The last thing you'll need is a set of assets that I've made available in a Mega or Google Drive folder. Links for all these things are available in the description box. Open Photoshop and create a new document. To start with, I suggest you work in a 1920 by 1080 area. Select the text tool and choose the Gravitation Falls font. Now click on your document to start typing and write out whatever you want your logo text to say. I'm going with Granny Fell Over here because apparently that's the first thing that popped into my head. Okay. It'll be important to make this a contrasting colour for later, so I've set mine to a bright green. I'm also using 320 point text because that fills a decent portion of the document. After writing out my logo text and comparing it to the original logo, I decided the letters were a bit too wide, and used the horizontal scaling property here to squeeze it down to 80% of the original width. One more thing to do is move the lowercase letters on the bottom line so the tops of them are aligned with the top of their adjacent capital letters. To do this, select the required text, choose the baseline shift property here, and set the value until it's aligned properly. For 320 point text like I'm using, I found a baseline shift of 100 points worked well. Now that you have your text laid out, I suggest you warp it as the original logo has some upwards curvature. Go to Edit, Transform, Warp. In this drop-down menu here, select Arc and set the bend amount to somewhere between 10 and 15%. Confirm the change, then go to Edit, Transform, Rotate and rotate your text to about minus 9 degrees. Okay, we've finished messing with the text layout. Duplicate your text layer so you have it backed up in case you realise you've made some kind of horrible mistake. Right-click on the text layer and choose New 3D Extrusion. The main 3D object's properties should now be showing at the top right here. Turn off Catch and Cast Shadows, then go to the current view in the 3D scene settings and change the camera mode to orthographic projection. Scale your text back up so it's taking up more of the workspace again like this. Now select the main 3D object again in the 3D scene toolbar, that's the one which has the same name as your logo text and go to the coordinates section up here in the properties. Input the following angles, 6 degrees for the X and 2.5 degrees for the Y. Now go back to the main mesh properties with this button and set the extrusion depth. If you followed what I've done accurately, then I think 900 pixels looks about right. Though you're free to experiment with any of these numbers if you think different numbers look better for your logo. From the Tutorial Assets folder linked in the description, get the Logo Colors PNG and import it into your document. Put it out of the way in a corner or something like I've done here. In the 3D toolbar, select the Extrusion Material element and change the Diffuse Material color. Select the new color by grabbing the orange from the Logo Colors PNG you just placed on your document. Select the Infinite Light 1 that appears in the 3D panel and go to its coordinate properties up here. Set it to the following angles. X angle minus 82, Y angle 37, and Z angle minus 40 degrees. This should light up the lower right of your text. Now click down here to add a new infinite light. Its default settings are fine, so we're done. Now make sure you can see the Layers toolbar again and duplicate your 3D object. This will make sure it's available for editing again if you want to change it later. Hide the duplicate layer. Speaking of changing the logo, if you want to change its text at this point, that's still possible. Go back into the 3D toolbar 
select the main 3D object and choose this Edit Source button. From here, you can alter the text that produced the 3D object, so you could technically use the file you have at this point as a partial template for making more logos like this. Very good. Now, before we go on, I suggest you increase the image size of the document we're working on. A higher resolution will help to retain a good quality image after the next few steps cause some aliased edges. Go to Image, Image Size, make sure Width and Height are linked with this button and set the horizontal width to 8192. This number is the maximum size for an image with one of the export tools we're about to use. Right click on your 3D layer and select Rasterize 3D. Now go to File, Export, Save for Web, Legacy. It may not say Legacy depending on which version of Photoshop you're using. In this box, change the setting to PNG 8 and turn off Dithering here. Click this button and choose Select All Colors. Control click on the transparent color and then click the Delete button to clear the color table. Now switch to the original view at the top left and use the eyedropper to select each color from the logo colors PNG you placed on the document earlier and add them to the color table. When you switch back to the optimized view, you should have a clean two color image. Save the result. Now choose the magic wand selection tool, set the tolerance to 32, switch off anti-aliasing and untick contiguous. Click on the front face of your text to select it with these settings and go to layer, new via copy. Make sure your new text front face layer is the only thing that's visible and export this as a PNG. Open the PNG you've just exported in Photoshop. Then import the orange background image over the top of that. You have to do it in that order or you'll be stuck with the limited orange color palette. Reorder the layers so the orange layer is at the bottom. Rasterize the orange layer and select and delete the logo colors in the corner if they were exported with the rest of the image. Now, if you have rounded letters like I do here, to make them soft shaded like the G in the original logo, we're going to have to make a quick manual edit. Control click on the orange layer to select its visible pixels. Now click on the polygonal lasso selection tool and start a negative selection by holding the Alt key when you start your selection. You want to make it so that the only part of the image that's left selected is a chunk about this size where you're going to add some smooth shading. Make sure the edge of the selection follows the angle of the shading. It doesn't matter if you select too much of the area behind the face text since that'll be covered up anyway. Now select the gradient tool and make a new color gradient that looks like this. Orange to black, 100% opacity at both ends, using the colors that are on the orange background image. Now just click and drag to define the direction of the gradient, and release to gradient fill the area. Repeat what you've just done for any other areas that require smooth shading. Now we're going to add outlines to the layers. Right click on the orange layer and select blending options. Select stroke, make it black, outside with normal blending, and if your document width is still set to 8192 like I suggested earlier, then I think 50 pixels looks about right. Apply the same stroke to the green text layer. Now import the logo mask PNG from the assets folder in the description. Hold shift and resize it so it covers at least the whole text part of the logo. Place it, make sure this layer is above the green text layer, then right click on the layer and choose Create Clipping Mask. You can reposition it at this point to make sure it looks good. Incidentally, if you're not happy with this logo mask, you can either make your own or use the other one that's available online. For the final touch, Go to the green text layer's blending options again and add another stroke. This needs similar settings to the first stroke, but set it to inside instead of outside 
and set the color to something from the top of the logo mask. I decided to make this stroke a bit thinner than the black outline, so I set it to 40 pixels at this resolution. Export your finished logo as a PNG. If you just needed the logo with a transparent background, then you're done. I'm going to outline a few more steps for the logo background and credits though. Open the blank logo background image from the mega folder in Photoshop and import your finished logo on top of it. Scale it and place it in the middle of your document. Another helpful thing you should import is the credit colors PNG from the assets folder in the, in the description. Put that in a corner somewhere. Now select the text tool. We're going to recreate the Disney logo first, so choose the Waltograph regular font. Use the left color from the credit colors PNG and write whatever you want. I'm putting my name in this one. 100 to 120 point text seems about right at this resolution. Make sure the other scaling options and baseline shift setting have been put back to normal or the text might look a bit weird. For the created by text, use the MV Bowley font, the middle color from the credit colors PNG and make it bold. Finally, for the creator credit, use the old press font, use the right color from the credit colors PNG and make sure bold is switched off or this text defining effect will not be shown. At this point, I realized it would be funnier if the granny was pushed by Alex Hirsch rather than just created by, so there you go. If you like, you can add a drop shadow to the two bits of text at the bottom, as I'm doing here. And that's it. Export your final logo on its background and we've finished. Thank you for watching my little tutorial. I hope someone finds it helpful. Remember to press all of the positive YouTube buttons, tell your friends about this video if they're also weird Gravity Falls fans, all that stuff. Okay, have a lovely time. Goodbye!